whoever is listening, guys, welcome back. My name is Grayson Mann, and welcome back to another episode of the Man with a Plan podcast. Today, it goes without saying, we have a very special, special guest. A long time coming. Uh, Darian Rencher, former Clemson running back, uh, two-time national champion, Disney Spirit Award winner, multiple spots in the media. He's everywhere on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. You can find this guy, the Palmetto Cat Crew, all the great stuff that he does. Darian, thank you for coming on the show, man. Bro, glad to be on. I know you said long overdue. We've been meaning to do this for a very long time, so I'm glad we finally locking it in, bro. It's perfect timing. Yeah, I think I remember meeting you in uh, Charlotte, I think, over the summer. And I was like, man, I have to. If I get the chance, I got to get Darian on the podcast. First of all, I want to congratulate you on the birth of your child. I hope that, how's that been going, man, the first couple of weeks of fatherhood? It is a mess of blessing. There's nothing in the world like it. Seriously, no feeling in the world that can really compare to becoming a father. Um, we, had a, we had a little honeymoon, baby. So that was unexpected. But we count the blessings as they come. And it's been sweet, man. Like, I was on a little girl. Uh, and so it's been really cool just to kind of sink into this new reality, getting to see her. She's kind of come up, you know, all the little human stuff that like, you just kind of, as a parent, you just geek out over, like, her yawning, her starting to, like, just experience life. And I don't know, I just stare at her all day, bro. It's, it's beautiful. Definitely a huge blessing. That's awesome, man. It's great to hear. Uh, I always do this with my guests. I like to rewind and go back to the beginning. And with you, football is yeah. a big part of your life. And I want to just, sure. how'd you get your start? Was there, a, was there a parental figure? Maybe there was somebody that was a coach that said, hey, you probably – should stick with this and just kind of the early memories of your football career. Can you walk us through that? Yeah. So I grew up, I was a huge basketball fan, um, big basketball fan played. That was my first where I really started playing was basketball and baseball. And then my mom, uh, not necessarily my dad, my mom was very scared about us starting football. And I remember all my friends at recess, I would be like one of the main ones, like scoring, doing things with the ball. And I was like, man, I told my mom, I was like, I really want to get into like organized sports. And so uh, I think I was I was eight or nine. I was in my ten U team, and I remember my first um, football game. My mom was so paranoid; she didn't really know anything about like football. She knows like sports, other sports, but she was like, "I'm gonna make sure you protect it." So she went to like Ross, I think, and got like soccer shin guards, soccer arm guards. So my first football game, I'm like decked out. I got my shoulder pads, my shin guards on my legs, shin, and then the uh, the guards on my elbows, and I'm like, I have no idea. And one of my friends was like, bro, what are you doing? I was like, I don't know. My mom told me where it is. Then my first carry touchdown. And so it looked very promising uh, from there. And then played middle school, played in high school, and then ended up at Clemson. That's I get right. more details. But, yeah, that, that was kind of yeah. kind of the, the gist. Uh, but it's been a definitely a crazy journey. Hey, she might have been onto something right there with the, the all the, the shin guards and stuff. It probably helped you there. No one was able to bring you down. Yeah, maybe. She was just super paranoid. You know, parents, especially moms, they just be so worried about the, the contact sports. Yeah, my mom was a, is a sports photographer. She's around football. So the second I started to get into it, she was just like, go for it, man. It was a very, very interesting relationship with that. But let's get into that high school. Uh, I think the one of the great things about what's synonymous with Darian Wrencher is the thing every, every post I see, the journey. And yeah. whether it's with uh, personal life, football, what is the journey for people that don't know? And where did that get started? Was it in high school? Was it when you got to Clemson? And just kind of describe what how you've carried that through your entire career. Yeah, so the journey, the phrase in and of itself kind of came to me my freshman year at Clemson. But the journey in, in its essence is like just the journey of life. Uh, all the ups and downs, everything in between, the good moments, the bad moments. And really, um, I, I kind of coined it as like, I just took, told the world, hey, this is my phrase. I'm going to use it for everything. Uh, just because it helped me frame my own experience uh, and kind of talk about high school. So I was playing varsity my freshman year, was super excited, uh, had a great freshman season, started getting recruited, came back for a really good sophomore season and was recruitment was picking up. But I tore my left ACL after my sophomore season and I rehab for eight months. And then right before my junior season, which is a huge season for anybody who knows about football recruitment, your junior year is usually like a big year to really like lock in your offers and start going on more visits. Uh, so eight months later, I tore everything in my opposite knee. Um, mm. and so I was sidelined for a year and a half of no football, uh, but still had aspirations to, to get to the next level and play and didn't want to shortchange myself by going to, at the time, smaller schools who gave me interest. I was like, man, I want to play at the highest level. And I saw what coach Swinney was doing with the culture and just knew I wanted to be a part of that because I'm, I'm a hometown kid from Anderson. So 25 minutes away from Clemson. And, and really it was like all those things kind of culminated what made my Clemson journey so special. And then I got a call, got a preferred walk on. Uh, and so the journey phrase came, I was in Tampa 
Um, it was the day of the national championship. I, I journal a lot. It's kind of one of my things like that. I've just picked up habits wise that have helped me stay like, you know, say mentally healthy. Right. So I was journaling that morning and I actually got really emotional and bro, I'm red. So I'm not going to play a lick. I'm not going to get in on special teams. I'm like, there's no way I'm even touching the field besides we warm up. And, um, I was just like, man, if it wasn't for the journey, this wouldn't be as special as it was because everything I had overcome, everything I had been through made that moment so special. It wasn't the moment in and of itself. It was the journey to that moment. And ever since then, I've kind of just stuck with the phrase and it helped me uh, through the best moments of my career or life post that point and the worst moments of my, my life post that point. It just helped me frame my experience. It's like, it's all about the journey, not the destination. It's all about it. Yeah. I think that's something that everyone can kind of relate to is just that it is what you make it. And I think that you took right. a leap of faith and it certainly paid off for anybody that's probably in your position that is going, man, maybe I could be the next Darian Wrench, or maybe I can take that leap of faith and go on to that big school and make the most of it. Do you have advice to get that specific group of people? Because there are those kind of players out there that are dealing with those kind of injuries, but know they have the potential to get to that next level and realize that dream. What would you say to them at this moment if you could maybe summate it in some short advice? Yeah, I would just say at the end of the day, they're going to either going to take the risk or have regrets. And so I, just, I never want to live with any regrets and I really don't have any. Um, obviously, detail for detail, some things don't work out as as you plan it or as you envision it. But as a whole, I took a risk and the Lord definitely rewarded it. And I'm very thankful that I have experience. It's not regrets. Like I look back, I'm like, I'm glad I took that risk as an 18 year old and said, this is what I want to do. Uh, so I just, that's why I tell people, take the risk. If you have opportunity to take the risk, Definitely take the risk, and because it's like, it's really the, the there's really no failure if if you if you try. Absolutely. So that that's one I need to like clip on like a TikTok or something to get like <laughs> to inspire people. But with your time at Clemson, and I, I think you could not have picked a better time to go to Clemson. Your two time national champion, Bro. the amount of success that they had in that run, unparalleled, ten win seasons, ACC yeah. championships, playoff appearances. What are some of your big takeaways from your Clemson career? earning a scholarship, being a part of that Clemson community. I think calling you an icon in this just Clemson little, little Clemson world is probably underselling it a little bit, but just some big takeaways from your career at Clemson, the bonds that you formed, the experiences, yeah. just kind of what are the big takeaways when you look back and really reflect on the, uh, the illustrious career? Man, you kind of said, said everything that I would articulate it, but yeah, it was the perfect time to get there. Like God just – I don't know. I was born the right time, went to high school the right time, and got in Clemson the right time. Hopefully, uh, I think they're going to have another run like that. And Coach Twenty, um, for his, cause he's going, he's going to coach for the next 10, 15 years. But yeah, the the six years I was there, man, we had an incredible run, um, and it was like the culmination of so many guys that have come before us. And I was just there to kind of carry that torch to the new heights with the with like the classmates that I had. And like you said, yeah, two two time national champion, uh, won five ACC championships. Um, I won four bowl games, so left with 11 rings. I uh, was able to accomplish, had some in incredible team successes and at the same time individual successes of my own just to get to accomplish my own dream. And I guess I would, I would kind of summate it as like, it was just immeasurably more than what I could have asked or imagined. And that's why I always tell people take the risk because I had no idea like taking that risk would lead to so many other domino effects along the way. Uh, I just knew that was a step in front of me. And I knew I had this... Uh, just like this burn is, I was like, I want to make this happen. <laughs> and so, um, and I had just, you just, you just had never know. Like, that's why you got to go for what's on your heart. Cause you never know what God has in store. And you just got to like, you, you, you envision it, but it's like, you don't know. And that's why I tell people, you got to go for it. So I went for it. And if you had told me that I would have had that experience, met uh, as many amazing friends as I did, been a, a part of a, such a, a growing coaching tree. Now it's like all over the country um had so many friends that are doing different doing different great things uh be named the most inspirational figure in college football as a as, you know, come as a walk-on like from the bottom and so it's just yeah I would say immeasurably more than I could ever ask or imagine it was it was an incredible experience and something I'm like forever forever tied to the Clemson family yeah I think seeing like pictures on your Instagram where like Trevor Lawrence is when you're groomsmen you're kind of like wow it kind of really makes it makes me realize this the, the goes deeper than just football, just the, the friendships that you form, the bonds, even me playing high school football. I still talk to some of those guys to this day on the right. daily on just checking in. And it, it's a, it's something you really can't describe, but something I, I had an interview with a uh, Larry Williams of rivals.com 
And we talked about this run that Clemson went on and what these last two years have meant. And I think what I took away from it is that winning is hard. <laughs> it sounds very That's... simple, but the process, I think when you go 15 and 0, 12 and 0 every year, you kind of, the way Clemson kind of blew through everybody, got to the playoffs, had the success they did. When there are bumps in the road, it kind of makes you reflect and go, man, it, winning is hard. But I know it sounds simple, but can you kind of walk us through what that statement means when you were a part of those national championship teams? Did it right. get more challenging when Clemson started to get a target on their back, when they started to ascend and really become what I kind of compared to Alabama? They, they had their rise. Everyone was like, oh, this is a great story. And then the hate, the, the media, everyone starts to pile on right. you. It gets harder. Each day gets more difficult. What was that process like? And how did the teams that you were a part of kind of right the ship or make, keep that focus going? Right. Yeah. I would just say winning is hard um, because it's so many to even get to the point to be successful. There's so many decisions before then that make you even um, can even afford the opportunity to be successful. So there were so many moments before I even got to Clemson that like, so many guys, so many recruiting classes, so many coaches, so many players have built the program to even have the foundation to get to the height that we got to. And so I'm, like I said, forever indebted to that. That's a, that's a, such a big piece of the run we went on was the foundation that was laid with Coach Sweeney's early years. And so when I came in, I think you saw like just the, it takes the right leadership, takes the right guys that are older to kind of lead, takes the right young energy to come in, like takes good recruiting classes, takes the right coaches, like the cohesiveness cohesiveness of a coaching staff defense and offense and then like you see coach Sweeney's leadership and just it takes kind of all like you put it all in a melting pot you got all the ingredients you kind of like got recruiting you got each position you, you need a good quarterback you need playmakers you need guys that are hungry you need guys gonna play special teams and give it their all you know they're not gonna play a snap on offense or defense you kind of need all those things you put in the pot and throughout my time there it was just the right ingredients mixed in with the right people and we were able to really accomplish something super special. And, and at the time, we knew it was really cool. And then seeing it now on the other side, on my first year out of college football, how rare it really was to be a part of two national championships and have that run of success. Like I said, I really do believe Clemson is going to have another run like that here soon. I don't need to go Sweeney. But it was just like that five-year window was like, you put that up against any five-year window in college football. Like, it's one of the best ever. Like, yeah. Which is crazy. You know, like, really, like, it was one of the best ever. We, had, we probably had... Um, probably along with Georgia, probably mm -hmm. the, the only 15-0 season ever. And I don't know how many more times that'll happen, but like that was a special, the first one, 15-0. And I guess what, to boil it down, it's just like, it takes a really, really great commitment by everybody involved. It takes a lot of belief um, and it takes a lot of sacrifice. And yeah, you kind of mix all things, you mix all things together and you got a chance. And that's the thing, like, even if you do all those things, you're not guaranteed to make a national championship every year. But, like, without those things, you don't have a chance. And so we gave ourselves a chance during that run. We're able to capitalize on it twice. And even the men's not winning national championships with just the level of competitive success was really special. Yeah, you guys mix one heck of a recipe for sure. It was I, – I look back on it in just in high school when I was just – I thought, man, I was spoiled as a, as a sports fan because when I get to school and Clemson loses a game, it's the end of the world or something. And so you kind of have to have that perspective of, hey, things are going to – when Clemson goes 11 and three, I remember when I was in elementary school and that was considered a miracle. And now right. it's kind of like a disappointment. It's kind of perspective is everything, but it I really think, is. Yeah. You touched on the, um, the I want to also really highlight Darren, an inspiration in the community, the Disney spirit award going through that time in 2020, where you were really a strong voice, not for just for Clemson, but nationally, whether it was organizing rallies on campus, whether it was the we want to play movement with guys like Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, really rallying the cause saying, hey, we want to play football and also really speaking up just for when it matters. And I think you kind of walk us through that 2020 season and just what gave you the uh, what, what empowered you to speak up and really in both aspects and with a, right. the early in 2020 and then obviously getting college football to where it is, because I don't think the 2020 season happens without the voices of the players. Right. No, for sure. I think it's like, once again, like that moment was a culmination of so many moments before, like uh, my own individual, like decision-making, I feel like they gave me the equity with my teammates, my coaching staff, for them to even trust me and even to back me as a voice for our team at the time. Then it, it became a national voice. 
And then I would say just the, the program of Coach Sweeney's built. He's built a program, a special Paul journey um, that empowers the players, like, as men. And so in that moment, it wasn't about, like, the jersey number. It was about me as a football player. And so along with other guys across the country, it was about us as real people stepping up for what we believe in. And so during that time, it was a crazy year. Like, it was – I mean, looking back, like, it's probably going to be one of the craziest years of our lifetime. Like, we're going to mm. tell our great-grandkids about that, like, during the year of 2020, what happened. And so I was as confused, frustrated, like, needed guidance as anybody else. Uh, and during that time, I just recognized, like, I can't change the entire world, but I can change, help change my world. And my world was the world of Clemson and my community and my state. And so, like, I just, I've always kind of had, like, a knack for, like, saying I'm going to figure it out. And when people, during that time, people needed people that were going to figure it out. And I, I wouldn't even say I was like the catalyst of the energy, but I knew I was like, I want to be the one to kind of help direct us in the right way. Everything we did with the, with the, the peaceful protests, like there were a lot of my teammates that had the energy to do something. And I was more so the one that like, I wanted to help them do it the right way. And I feel like mm -hmm. looking back, that was one of my proudest moments of my collegiate uh, time was like orchestrating that with the students, the faculty, coaching staff, the community. We came together for such a special time. And as we look back and same similar thing to the We Want to Play movement, there was a lot of energy across the country. And I wasn't saying I was a culprit of like the, or the initiator. I was more so like, I want to help see how with my influence, my resources, how I can help do this the right way. And looking back, it was like, we were able to, I still don't know how that happened. Like literally <laughs> we, we uh, it was a couple of guys I had met from the West Coast through the social, the, the social injustice stuff. And we had gotten a bunch of group text just by like kind of who was advocating across the country. And I remember just kind of put it out there. And then we all, next thing you know, that night before we dropped that press release, it's me, like you said, Justin, Trevor, Najee Harris, Panay Sewell, Javon Holland. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of like big, you, you really look at the list, you're like, oh my goodness. Like, yeah, man. like Shuba Hupper was on there. It was like, it was representatives from each conference and kind of who's who's. And then a, a, a couple guys, they were kind of the brains behind a lot of the conferences, the the player the player movements. And so we ended up just kind of devising a plan. I ended up kind of just being one of the main ones, like, hey, here's what we're going to do. And guys was like, all right, let's try it. One of the guys was a, was a graphic designer, Lord willing. We told him, we, we told him, hey, put these bullet points, make it look like this. He sent us a graphic. And I was like, hey, everybody posted at 12, 12, uh, 12 p.m. Or is it 12 a.m.? 12 midnight. And we dropped it. And bro, we wait, I think it was an hour. It went viral. And when I woke up the next morning, I saw the president tweeted at that time. And oh, it was wow. just like, all right, I guess we made a difference. And then I remember <laughs> Coach Sweeney and uh, at the time, our AD Dan Radikovich, uh, we all talked the next day. It was like, whatever y'all did worked. And then that was kind of the, the, the turning point. And when the three out of five power five conferences decided to, to, to opt in and play, then the Big Ten and Pac-12 came later. And that was a memorable season, even though we didn't uh, finish the way we wanted to. That was still one of my most favorite years of playing playing college football. Yeah, because every week I felt like I was on the edge of my seat, going, "Are we gonna play? Well, are, like, we, are we gonna? Is this thing gonna keep get, keep going? Is it gonna stop?" Yeah, it was it was crazy. Every time I saw like a press release of someone getting COVID, I was just like, "Oh no, here yeah, this could." But when you no. you mentioned how you put out the press release, were you not tempted to just keep hitting that refresh button to see if when it was oh, going no, no. viral? So me and uh we actually me and Trevor actually stayed together that night. I remember we we both posted it and uh I was just refreshing it because it went like it went crazy because we all was from every side of the country. Mm -hmm. Like and it just I just saw it going and going. And so when I went to bed that night, like one o'clock after like an hour, I kind of knew it was doing some damage. But then I woke up the next morning and it was like, bro, y'all just did something like revolutionary. Like y'all made it happen. And we were, all my teammates were like, bro, it worked. And so it was, yeah. I mean, looking back, that was so crazy. And I'm just glad it worked out. It was it was really a, a year unlike anything else that I think I will ever personally see uh, in my lifetime. But let's talk about your life after Clemson and uh, your experience with the NFL. You got a camp invite with the Panthers. So the, yeah. local, the local Anderson guy gets to go to the, uh, the Carolina team. I think that I was know. pretty cool to mention. And then just kind of what was that like with the NFL and uh, – your plans after life after football, you've done a lot of stuff in the media, ACC network yeah. appearances. Is that something that, Hey, I want to do something in media or broadcasting, or is it something that on the social media side, or are you just trying to cultivate it day by day? Pretty much. Yeah, bro. You explain just how I'm feeling. Um, so yeah, basically, uh, I, same similar 
heart posture is when I went to Clemson. I don't want to live with any regrets. I want to take risks. And so when I was leaving, um, like somebody who's being realistic might say, hey, bro, why I try that? Just go ahead and do something else. And I'm like, I don't know. It was a, it was a similar sense of like I've all, what's made me the most happy and brought me the most purpose has been taking these risks. And if it, if the door is like cracked open a little bit, I see it as an opportunity to, for me to open a door. And so I had some opportunities and some interest from agents or different training facilities that I wanted to go to. And I was like, you know what, man, like what, what's, what's the worst thing that could happen? You go to train, you have a good time for a couple of months. I was able to, through NIL, to have the provision to make it happen. And I was like, bro, at, at worst, you get away, you go meet some great people, you go to a cool city, move away for a second, and you give it a shot. That's the worst thing that happened. The best thing right. happens, you actually get a shot, you get to experience it, and you can always say you, you, you did your best. And that's what happened. Uh, I moved, moved to Miami, went to House of Athlete, uh, which is where some teammates before me had trained. And so I went there um, and had a great experience, man, training a lot of top guys in the draft, made some incredible friendships. Uh, some, some of the guys, like a lot of pro guys go down to Miami and train, so met a lot of guys through that. And it was an incredible experience, man. One, I love Miami. Uh, it's a great time. And it was, like I said, just a great experience. And it really prepared me. And so when I came at the pro day, I had a great pro day, man. Like I thought I got my money's worth, was able to put up the numbers I wanted to, to just get, I, give myself a chance. That's me and Coach Sweeney talked about. He's like, it's slim, but man, if you go do what you're supposed to do, you can give yourself a chance. And it was the last day before they cut off the, um, the ability to forgot for, to get signed for signing for, um, for like mini camp. Mm -hmm. So my agent calls me. It was on a Wednesday. The cutoff was on Thursday because you got a report on Thursday. And so um, my agent calls me, hey, the Panthers will give you a shot. Because it's like four or five teams were kind of talking about giving me a chance. Uh, but then she was like, hey, the Panthers the Panthers going to take you. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is crazy hometown, whatever. Um, and, man, I went there, gave it my all, had a great chance, had a great camp, met some good friends through that. Um, knew I really, I really, like, did my thing. Got really close to the GM there. And it just wasn't the right time. And look at everything played out there. It was just like, it just wasn't the right time and of everything. But it was a great experience. And since then, I kind of look like you were alluding to, uh, I've always kind of found myself in front of a camera or talking, using my voice. And so being in the media, uh, doing social media are things I definitely feel like are in alignment with what I want to do. Uh, use my platform to, to do cool things, funny things, serious things, kind of all of the above. But definitely to grow a platform, use my voice. And so uh, I dibble and dabble to some media stuff uh, this this past year, just kind of get my feet wet officially. Um, and so the AC Network, which is amazing, great people there. I did some things with 247 Sports, uh, a couple of different e like sub ESPN podcasts, uh, kind of getting into some things now with some other guys uh, across the college football landscape. And so, yeah, just kind of figure it out, man, like um, in that space. And then the social media stuff I started doing in college, like which is getting on TikTok. Uh, started posting and was able to just have a couple of videos do really well. And so it's built a really sustainable platform. And uh, as a lot of people, I don't think many people know, like us young people know, but you really can monetize social media. It's such a blessing these days, mm -hmm. like kind of the red tapes kind of cut away to where like you can uh, all these platforms, if you uh, post enough, you get big enough following, you can really make a real career out of you doing social media. So that's kind of something I've been doing. And then I got other passions. Like I'm about to come on a clothing brand here this year, the journey. Um, got a podcast I'm working on, like more lifestyle, just like trying to inspire people called the journey podcast that I'm shooting my episodes for now. That's I'll start posting in the February. And so, yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing, man. Like, heard I, it here first guys. Yeah. Y'all heard it here first. So, <laughs> um, definitely excited about that. And I'll start, I'll start posting some of those episodes, um, uh, trying to get some, I guess some Clemson family on there, but definitely trying to broaden my, broaden my reach. Like, I think I, I, I never want to be put in a box. I think I, I enjoy a lot of different things. I think football is a big part of my life. But at the same time, I think influence, inspiration goes well beyond sports sometimes. So I want to tap into all realms. And so, uh, yeah, like kind of mouthful, but definitely um, same vein, man. I want to take risks, do things I'm passionate about. I don't want to wake up and have any regrets. That's kind of what I'm living by. And it's served me well up to this point. It definitely isn't easy, but I'm definitely thankful for the, for the path. Yeah, absolutely. I, you keep taking leaps of faith. It's going to keep paying off and that, that lack of fear something that I really want need to adapt is just kind of like the fear of the unknown. Cause I, I will go back to the NFL thing. And if you would decide, Hey, maybe this just isn't for me and my door is closed. I would never want to be left with that. Oh, what if, and you, what you if, did it. yeah. It's like what if, and that's the thing is, well, all this stuff is 
it'll have been very every stage of my life have been very reasonable for me not to do it. Like I could have people could try to convince me, and I easily could have convinced myself, like going to Clemson. I initially didn't have a scholarship. I had to figure out how to get scholarship money. And I was able to do that. And but I could I cannot imagine my life if I like literally you see this behind me right now. I mean, mm-hmm. just like it's it's in my office. Like it's such a pivotal moment, not really because like like the football stuff was great, but what it meant for me as a man, like I took a risk. And there was so much um, in store for me that if I didn't take that risk, I would never experience. And I, it may, almost makes me sick to think of like, if I would have listened to people and went somewhere else and not experienced that, like what my life would be like. I met my wife at Clemson. I met my best friends, like prepare me for so many things. Uh, they equipped me to go out and, and conquer the world. And so same thing when I left Clemson, I was like, let me take the same principles I did here, go apply it. And the last year of my life, 2022 was, the craziest year of my life, uh, got married, got a shot, was able to do some cool things and the, whatever work looks like. And so same thing this year, like, all right, what's uh, what's the next risk? What's on my heart? And I can convince myself to play it safe, but also I know like, man, if I do this and it's always hard, but it's like, it's for death always been rewarded. So. Yeah, seriously. If, any, if anyone could take anything from this podcast, you guys just got to just go for it. There, There is no, there's no limit to what you can do. And uh, no just to wrap up and just a couple final questions here. Yeah. It's your first year as a fan. And I understand I've, I've you and I follow yeah. you on Twitter. We've uh, had some interactions there. Glad you interact on like a little timeline. It's a little, it's a little different, isn't it? Like when you're in the stands, you get to kind sure. of voice <laughs> out your opinion on what's going on. And with you being, having the experience being on the sideline, being able to kind of have input and being able to play and have an impact there. You're probably just like, I bet that first game must've just been like, ah, oh, so can you yeah, take us through what that first year was like and just your thoughts on the 2022 season as a whole? Yeah, man, it's definitely it's definitely different. Um, the the connection never leaves you, though. Uh, that's one thing I say is the same. It's almost like um, I obviously was super invested because I played, but now post-playing, like I, I, I try to watch almost all the games. One, because I know a lot of players on the team, and then obviously it's just like I, I enjoy watching us play. Um, it still brings me a lot of joy seeing the guys run out there. And so – uh, yeah, I mean, getting on Twitter, especially Twitter is a different world, man. Yeah. Clemson, hey, Clemson football, the Clemson family on Twitter, y'all are crazy. I enjoy <laughs> it, though. And the players do, too. Like, as a player, like, you always saw a lot of stuff. You just couldn't comment on it just because, like, it didn't really make as much sense as a player. Unless you really saw, saw something out of pocket or super, super great, you would comment on it. But now as a foreign, like, as a, like a foreign player, I see stuff. I try to engage with the fans. I try to put up my own takes. I really try to pride myself. I don't never want to be critical of the program because I know how that can be. But I do try to give, like, honest takes. Uh, I try to highlight a, a lot of good things. I try to analyze it to where fans can understand it more. And it's try to give good breakdowns. I think that's, like, something I, I think I know as fans that people have questions. Uh, and sometimes what you see is not always what you see, if that makes sense. And a mm-hmm. lot of people just have really bad takes that kind of get some traction. So I really put some, out, put some good out there in the ecosystem that's, like, a little more like you know like a little more honest a little more true uh because sometimes like social media there's no accountability people can say whatever and people just go with it so um yeah i'm trying to think what else i think the 2022 season uh was definitely like a it was a journey had some roller coaster moments some really great moments in there i think they had a really good team a really good senior class uh there were a lot of exciting games like i would think about that lake forest game was one of my favorite oh. games i like, had me had me on the edge of my seat um there's obviously some disappointing moments in there. Um, but at the same time, I feel like there's a lot of still that same, like all the ingredients are still there. I think the Clemson family should stay like encouraged. Like all the ingredients are still there to really still be, be a, which we are a premier program. Uh, we had another 10 win season, which is like we're the third team, third program ever to have this many 10, 10, 10 win seasons co- consecutively. So I think people, like you said, perspective earlier is so key because this is, Obviously, it was a national championship year. We didn't win the bowl game. But, like, the level of competitive success is like no other. And I feel like it's, like, the expectation is for it to be here. And we'll get back there. And I think this next wave of, of energy guys, obviously, a lot of guys coming back, which is crazy, um, which I'm excited to see. A lot of my my, my, my little brothers kind of, like, doing thing again this year. And you got a lot of young energy coming in. I feel like they got a good nucleus kind of reminds me of some of those teams I was on where you got a lot of older uh, guys who could have left and went pro, but they came back on a mission. You got some, uh, you got a good young quarterback. You got dynamic running backs. 
We got some receivers getting healthy. Like, I mean, all the makers, you got an older offensive line. You got fast. You just like all the pieces, DBs, linebackers, safety. I mean, you just got all the pieces to me kind of coming back for them to make a really, really special run this year. And so, yeah, 2022 was a year. A lot of things happened in it. But at the same time, I feel like it was another, like, all in all, another positive in the Cubs and football story with Coach Sweeney. Like, it obviously isn't, like, the best year ever, but it's it's definitely a positive in the building blocks. I feel like we, at the team, take steps forward. And so I think the sky's the limit with this next group. And like I said, I really do believe, I think people should get their, their hopes up for sure. I think the, the best days that come to football are ahead. Like, I think there's going to be a, a special run. Like, we never, as much success as we had, we never won back-to-back natties. Georgia just did it. I think Clemson can do that. There's a lot, there's a lot of things still that, that we haven't done that still can be done. Absolutely. And yeah, I think the the unique thing from this year, at least from my perspective, is my first year covering Clemson football for just the media. And you kind of get that behind the scenes perspective of just the ins and outs. And so I would come home, I would go to see friends, talk to the family and just have that added sense. And not like to say that I knew more than the other guy, but just like I heard this from somebody. I heard somebody say this at a press conference and just kind of the added knowledge. It, It helps. And it kind of I think it makes the picture more clear when you actually see the product on the field. But uh, Darian, right. I just want to have one final question for you. It's a fun one, so don't worry. Yeah. Super Bowl 57, you got the Chiefs okay. and the Eagles. Mm. Who are you taking and why? Like, we had some fun games last night. We also had some controversy. Yeah. Oh, man. Twitter was crazy man, last night. It was very crazy. I'm so, like, people always ask, well, who's my favorite NFL team? Like, I don't really don't have one. I cheer for my friends. Like I really have a lot of been blessed with a lot of friends that have gone on and, and made a professional out of this game and playing at the next level. And it's like on any given Sunday, I just cheer for my friends. I probably like the Jags a little more than anybody just because like, you know, I'm just biased a little bit. Like I just like I've been to more games and go support mm-hmm. them in person more than anybody. But as far as like really having a team, like I support all my friends. So in this game, you got Mario Goodrich, Kayvon Wallace on one side, you got Jay Ross, you got Cornell. Um, that might be it on one side. Mm-hmm. So I mean, either way, I got somebody to root for, cheer for. Um, just me personally, like, I'm just become like a big Jalen Hurts fan. Like, I just like what he stands okay. for. And so uh, I would love, like I said, either way it goes, I got a friend who's going to have a, a great experience and go get a ring from it. But if I'm just, like, choosing a team I'd rather see win, like, I got a lot of respect for Patrick Mahomes, but I just love the way Jalen Hurts has carried himself throughout his career. And so I would love to see him kind of be the young guy to go and get him one. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's – it's another game like last year where I not a fan of either team, but I, I can enjoy what's going on out there. Patrick Mahomes. Right. Is, I, I, we find something new about him every week when he plays, he's special, unbelievable. Special. Jalen hurts special story. I personally, yeah. I would never, I knew he was talented, but I didn't think it was Super Bowl quarterback level talent. So it's been really fun to see his game right. really take off in year three. It's well, I could talk about it for hours. It's off, but I, yeah. I know you got a busy schedule, so we're going to wrap it up here. Darian, Thank you so much, you guys. Go check out his stuff on TikTok, Instagram. I'm going to try to link all that down in the description when you're watching tomorrow or whenever you're listening. Guys, and also, thank you so much for 15,000 listeners across all platforms. It's been an unbelievable experience the last couple months. We've really, oh, I appreciate it. Come on, bro. Give me your flowers, bro. This is cool. I mean, like you, I'm going to give your flowers. Like, bro, just stick with it. Mm -hmm. This is the beginning of a lot. I think it even takes so much initiative and courage even to put yourself out there and start something. And so the fact you're doing this is like in and of itself already success. And just I don't know what, how long it's going to take, but just stay consistent with it. Keep it going. And obviously you have fun with this. So nonetheless, you get to talk to cool people. Even you taking the initiative to ask me, it's like, bro, you're doing your thing. And like this is going to lead to the next person, the next person, the next person. So just keep with it. You're obviously on a good path. And like, bro, do your thing. I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad to come on the man with the plan show. I love the name yes, too. sir. Hey, I had, to, I had to, in high school, I thought it was pretty corny. It was actually conceived during quarantine and I, my dad gave me my first microphone was like, make something of this. And I was I like trying that. to come up with a corny name. So the mammoth plan kind of worked and I didn't really, I didn't think it would stick, but it has. I've no, it's catchy. Start, it's catchy. It's Grace kind of a man, nickname. Man with a plan. Yes, yeah, sir. Bro, stick with it. I like it. <laughs> Guys. Thank you so much for watching as always subscribe, do all the things like comment, go check out Darian's stuff. Give him the support he deserves. Uh, community icon, Clemson running back, all the good stuff. Darian, thank you once again. Guys, have a fantastic day, and as always, take care.